Hi everyone, Ian from DIY Home and Gardening. So, as you can see, I'm in the garage today, which has got a me in one thing. Yep, it's another little build coming on, and it's got something to do with that uh, package there. So let's have a look, shall we? Um, so, in there, I've got three panels of polycarbonate, twin wall polycarbonate. Uh, I've also had delivery last week of some two by two pressure, te pressure treated timber. Um, so that's gonna be my framework sheeting and very crude drawing of, well, it looks like a box. I suppose it is a box. Um, it's gonna be a um, cold frame. So let's go and have a look where it's going. Okay, so last year, about this time last year actually, I built my greenhouse. And obviously the first thing that happens once you build a greenhouse is you fill it up. So let's just have a quick look. Um, so at the moment, it's a bit of a pain to be honest because I've got the, the heated mat going, which is for the dahlias and the sweet peas and things like that. Um, I've also got all these chrysanthemums in here that they don't really need the heat. They don't want the heat either. And you can see that because it's too warm in here, they're getting stretched and I don't really want that. And plus, I need somewhere to put all the stuff to acclimatise, all the seedlings, I should say, uh, as they start growing in the, sort of the March-April period. So basically what my thinking is, is that I'm going to build a cold frame that will sit on the back here. Um, can't go right up to the house because it's going to be, uh, well, because of the downpipe. Um, from here to the wall is 1.5 metres. So I'm going to have to make it about 1.35 metres, I guess, just to allow for that uh, downpipe still to go. And then the, the sheets that I've got, they're just over a metre tall. Um, so I think it'll probably come up to about this kind of height. Um, and then where the, the sheets are a metre, no, a metre wide, I'm going to cut them into half to about 50 centimetres. So then that'll probably come out somewhere about here. So it'd be quite a good size space and in actual fact it will allow me so these are 40 centimeters so to give you an idea so we have timber work and it'll just allow me to get those on there um, and more importantly when it comes to cell trays i'll be able to fit uh four four lots of cell tray um next to each other i think it's four um so they will, no, it must be five. Okay, so that's going to be the easiest way to work it out. There we are, so they're the cell trays. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. So we'll get five in there. And so um, that give us a nice a bit of space for those. And so then we'll have um, base plus two shelves. Uh, so then that will give me 15 trays that will hold and they've been nicely spaced out as well so that uh, from the autumn through to about now I can put the chrysanthemums in there and then um, once we get to yeah I suppose March no probably like April May really um, maybe March then uh, some of the other seedlings will be able to come out as they germinate and need hardening off so you know like all the lettuces and onions and things like that to start with and then obviously as we get more into your may periods then it'd be things like the tomatoes but anyway we're slightly getting ahead of ourselves so first things first let's go and uh, get back in the garage and work out what we got to make right so back in here okay so um should be relatively straightforward to be honest because it's going to be a lot that's going to be similar uh I need the four uprights, which I will know roughly um, in height once I get a couple other bits done. 
These intermediates will all be the same and these long sections will all be the same. So to start with, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take out the timber work and I'm going to router uh, all the timber just like I did with my greenhouse. As To be honest, it worked really well. Um, as you can see there, you know, it worked really well to accommodate and to allow me to slide the polycarbonate into the uh, timber to create that nice um, watertight and airtight uh, seal, I suppose, or finish. Um, so yeah, going to route it down a load of the, the pieces. Uh, I'm not going to cut uh, route it all of them, but certainly I'll probably do a, a good sort of half a dozen I would think something around those um, certainly enough so that I can and there I should say they're three meter length so each each one of those will allow me to do say like a, a bottom and a, a top um, on both sides so I suppose I need two there to be done um, one which will accommodate for the sides so that's three of those and then we'll have a look at doing the sides as well so that will be five essentially is what i need to router but uh i'll double check when i um when i get going so first things first set up the router so that is a 10 millimeter bit that's in the the router there um i've set up the guide as well basically just using a scrap piece of wood so I know this face is uh, 42 mil wide so 21 mil would be the dead center of it uh, the other face incidentally is 44 mil wide um, but yeah I wanted to get going to be doing it on this side so start off mark your centers or center of the wood and then just make sure that uh, your router's cutting nicely through the centre. If it isn't, then unfortunately you just need to keep adjusting the, the guide um, until the distance from there to the centre point is your correct amount and it matches up with the wood. So always better off to set it up, test it on some scrap of bits of wood rather than uh, ruin the, uh, the good stuff. So. Now let's set up some of the good stuff and um, get that done. And there you have it, that's the first one done. Now for the next three. So, easy way to clean this channel out, just use a screwdriver, run it down, dislodge it all. But say, so, three more to go. Right, so I've set this out roughly for you to be able to see. Got the um, one of the bottom links there that's routed, one of the top links that's routed. So it's just sitting on top of the polycarbonate. And that's allowed me to measure from bottom of timber there to top of timber there, which is a total distance of one meter 12, uh, which has allowed me to cut one, two ends. <clears throat> so that will um, well allow me to screw that on potentially measure screw the other one on which should form the back section but before I do that what I want to do is uh, I'm going to router this side on this one and one of the sides on this um, timber as well so that they can then accommodate a piece of sheeting to come out this way to then form the sides so uh, I get that done. Uh, I just um, think it's easier to get all the cutting done in one go and then uh, get it put together. There we are, now routed on both sides, pre drilled, ready to go in. So, uh, yeah, can fix that in position and that'll be one end done. Right, having got that end piece on, I can now use that as my fixed point and work out where I need to be. Um, so, if I'm going to be doing it at a total of one meter 35, then knowing that this piece here, or this width here is uh, 
44 mil, 45 mil to make it easy, then essentially at one meter 30 and a half centimeters, or thousand and or 1305 mil. Um, so essentially, that's where I need to cut that piece of timber, same on the bottom, and then measure and cut the uh, polycarbonate accordingly. So that will do the back panel, and then I can then repeat a similar sort of stage, or well, exactly the same stage, to be able to do the two side panels. Okay, so having cut the frame down, I've uh, now been able to get the uh, the frame into the garage. Makes it much easier. Um, so essentially, that is the back panel uh, that obviously will be screwed onto there. And it just allows me now to um, transfer some measurements onto this sheet of polycarbonate and uh, cut that. So the polycarbonate will be the length of this plus the 10 mil that goes into that groove on the inside there and the 10 mil that goes on or into there so uh, yeah nice and simple mark out the polycarbonate cut it fix it and then screw that end panel on Right, so I've measured the gap uh, in the framework, um, including the routed out section. So it gives me one meter 28 for the total length of uh, polycarbonate sheeting I need. So um, measure one side, mark it, measure this side, mark it, just use a straight line, or in my case, use the spirit level just to connect the uh, sections and then i'll just put the tape measure down the center just to double check to cut polycarbonate you can either use a hand saw or just use a jigsaw with um, a fine toothed bit so again in this case improvising uh, using a bit that is normally used for metal work um, essentially that's it we'll just uh, cut the board let's go and there we are, that's the panel all cut down. So now the protective layer can come off and we'll put some uh, ceiling tape across there. Right, so having taken off the protective layer on this side, I've kept this layer on as it reminds me as to which way has to go outermost. So this side has the um, uh, UV protection to it so uh, just might as well leave it on until last minute but uh, we've got to take the end so um, using this which is a specific um, tape that you use on polycarbonate it has this sort of perforated uh, fabric area that allows the uh, allows it to breathe essentially, so it will let excess moisture come out of the sheets. Um, you know, if you get uh, condensation build up, but it will stop all the dust particles and moisture actually getting in there. So it's really simple, literally just run it out across the top, cut it to length and then stick down. I'll show you. And like so, so that's all done on that, that side, that end. I'll do the same on the other and then uh, this panel can go in the frame there we are i thought i'd show you so that's the finished back panel and now essentially to create exactly the same for doing the sides not that difficult really so um to be most efficient what i did was i've cut the um the panel uh, width in half and so that is going to be uh, now my um, total depth if you like of the uh, cold frame so uh, yeah it just means that it is uh, 52 and a half centimeters wide that panel and then you have the timber either side so that would give me my uh, total width on the cold frame and um, 
I'll, sh I'll just show you. So then this will obviously fit in like so. Oh. So I'm going to do the top and bottoms now. Well, one side panel, second side panel. Just need to uh, get them in. and screw them on. Okay, so side panels are on. As is only me, uh, you have to sort of improvise as to how you can get them on. Uh, lift that. There we are. So, back side panels. Front, front's gonna be um, uh, open essentially, or opening doors. So uh, all I need to do now is cut some internal cross beams, which will be same length as these ones. Uh, obviously for um, doing this front, they don't have to be routed. So they're just going to be uh, cut and uh, screwed into position. There we are. So that's the basic frame done. Now, uh, really it's up to you as to what you want to do um you know whether you want to make a normal frame on the top screw it down to form your uh, roof if you like you know whether you use the polycarbonate to make it nice and clear or do a timber top or make a panel with a set of hinges on so the whole lid can you know just lift up um that's a an option which yeah, I might consider. I haven't decided as yet. Depends how many hinges uh, I've got. Um, need to make a set of doors, so that will require routing for some more timber work that will sit, you know, essentially within to make one door and two doors. Uh, so yeah, doors to build, and also need to put in some internal supports to the base and cross sections for where the relevant shelves are going to be but essentially you know you built your frame now you decide uh, how you want to finish it so um yeah just uh, brought the unit in here to get the uh, cutting and fitting done so currently this is upside down I've just uh, fitted some braces to the base of the structure um, basically because it's going to hold a shelf anyway on the base but uh, also you want to add plenty of weight so that it's not going to be top heavy in case you get any gusts of wind so all I've done reinforce the sides and um, put two central pieces if you can have two central pieces but I'm sure you know what I mean two pieces um, to stop it bowing you know bowing inwards that way or flexing unnecessarily um yeah that's uh, that's it so uh, let's get it turned over for the time being that's as it's going to sit next is to measure and cut for some doors so i'm going to build two equal sized doors um they are going to be hinged but nevertheless uh what i would say when you're doing your measuring measuring even don't measure from tight from inside to you know bottom to top probably better and that's what i'm going to do is get uh, a couple of packers in there um, potentially to work out you know two millimeters clearance bottom and top so four millimeters in total put a couple of packers down the bottom first totaling your four millimeters and then measure from the top of those to there and then that way that will give you four millimeters total um leeway if you like to allow for the doors to open nice and freely yes it will have a slight gap but you can address that later with a little bit of internal insulation um, but yeah certainly if you build it so tight that the doors are you know rubbing on the bottom and rubbing on the top especially at the moment whilst we're using dry wood as soon as the wood gets damp and swells or twists 
you won't get the doors open or shut properly. So leave a couple of millimetres tolerance. Right, so you can see that it's gone darker now. It's only half five, but uh, obviously we're still winter. Uh, put a couple of hinges on the essentially what is the roof panel. Um, I've decided that I would do in the end just to enable for uh, a bit more functionality. So that can come up. Uh, I need to buy a couple of handles really to enable easy lifting for that and for the doors, which brings me nicely on to the door panels. Let me uh, step back marginally. Uh, yeah, so uh, constructed the door panels um, exactly the same way as the rest of it. So routed the timber work, uh, put the polycarbonate in. So now to fit them and again, just going to use a couple of hinges, uh, two hinges on either side of the door or two hinges per door, I should say, and um, see about hanging it. So better get a move on. Well, before I fix them, I thought I'd just show you the hinges actually. So these are the hinges I'm using, uh, much like for the roof. Um, they're called a fixed butt hinge, which basically means that that pin is uh, slightly wider, if you like, on both ends, so it can't fall out. And you can see that they're inter, um, interlocking, so uh, it gives you a nice smooth movement. They're nice and strong, and they're not going to twist, which given the amount of weight, and you know, possibly if uh, you leave a door open and the wind catches it, um, you don't want that amount of force on a flimsy hinge. So it's all, always worth spending a little bit of, uh, well, marginally more money. Um, that said, I think these were only about uh, two pounds for a packet of two. So um, from Screwfix, so nothing too extravagant, but they're not the cheapest of the cheap. So before we uh, we fit the hinge, I just thought I'd show you that uh, the hinge actually has two different finishes. So you've got this, this side here that my thumb's on, that's a dead flat side. And then this side here that has this slightly contoured section. And with these butt hinges, it's actually the contoured section that goes onto your frame um, because then that butt is then pulled slightly backwards which uh, gives you more um, more gap, more um, leeway and movement for the actual door to uh, pivot out. So uh, that's how you, you fit the butt hinges. So having uh, put the first screw in, just thought I'd show you again. So when you set it up, get your first one in, you can then move your hinge to get, get it evenly spaced. For this, I'm using these um, 35 mil screws. So then that's going to ensure that you've got really good um, bite or securing a good grip into that timber. And uh, that way it's not going to pull out. Right, so I've been out this morning, got the handles, got a little lock, um, moved it into situ so at least it's kind of level so I'll put some packers under one side so I um, thought I'd show you how it looks so first off I did make this as a, a liftable lid just need to make some sort of stay um, and then let's get these doors open annoyingly I've run out of wood to do the uh, second shelf um, but that's a, a job for another day. So uh, yeah, just cut up um, some of the polycarbonate sheeting and set that out. So uh, yeah, should be quite a nice little cold frame. Well, that is end of video. Obviously I'm looking pretty presentable as always. Um, so me and the cold frame. Um, yeah, if, uh, if you've got any questions, then obviously send them over to me. Do my best to answer them for you. Um, I will also include the link to the greenhouse as well. So you can kind of see uh, how I built that together with the link for cutting the polycarbonate just in case. Um, but yeah, essentially, 
It's a, a nice little garden project done. Certainly a lot sturdier, a lot bigger than you can get in the garden centres or online. And all in that has cost me about £230 or fractionally under £230. And that includes the handles, screws and the little lock. So um, it sounds a lot, but given the fact that I've had three of the sort of more flimsy ones uh, over the, probably the last six years and uh, so they've easily totaled more than what I've just spent on building this but anyway uh, if you like what I'm doing please subscribe to the channel if uh, you don't want to miss out on future videos then uh, please hit that reminder button and I always say it but it is so true enjoy what you're doing enjoy your little garden projects and uh, obviously um, we're not that far away from the beginning of another busy season. So, uh, yeah, till next time. Bye now, you go. See you soon.